Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Chef Pam and this is Cooking with Chef and More. You saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. We're gonna get right into it. Hawaiian sweet rolls. It's holiday time, guys. Who doesn't want dinner rolls? Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever holiday you celebrate. And who doesn't want rolls in between those dates as well? Guys, we're gonna make them from scratch. We all know the packaged Hawaiian sweet rolls that we see in the grocery store. Yes, I've had them. Yes, I buy them. But guess what? We're making them from scratch. And guys, when you make these, you will not buy the ones in the store anymore. And if you want to learn how to make all kinds of homemade food and dishes, the easy, simple way, made from scratch. Guys, you're in the right place. I have a whole channel full of dishes that'll get you there. Let's get busy. Okay guys, so the first thing we want to do, we have pineapple juice here. This is a cup of pineapple juice. You need a large bowl. You wanna pour your pineapple juice in there. We're gonna add sugar to it. And guys, I will have all the ingredients in the description, so don't worry about that. Just follow along. You wanna stir this sugar in really well until it's good and dissolved. Just make sure it's all dissolved. You don't want any sugar in the bottom of the bowl. Once you get this dissolved, guys, we're gonna be adding yeast. Okay, guys, we're gonna add this yeast in here. This is one packet of yeast. And then we're gonna wait 10 minutes for it to foam up. Okay, that's gonna let you know that it's ready for the rest of the ingredients. So you just sprinkle it on top, that's it. Just sprinkle the yeast on top. Give it 10 minutes and we'll be right back. Okay guys, it's been about 10 minutes and it's actually foamy. It may not look like it's that foamy to you guys because I moved my bowl, which shifted the yeast in there. So now we're gonna add our salt in. We're going to also add in a couple of tablespoons of oil. This is just regular cooking oil, guys. Just regular cooking oil. And we're gonna get that stirred in really well. Then next, we're gonna be adding in our flour, one cup at a time. Okay guys, and for these, we want to use bread flour. So if you don't have bread flour, get it. I'll be honest, I've never tried this recipe with regular uh, purpose flour or any other type. So I can only, um, say what I really know that works, and that is bread flour. So if you don't have any bread flour, get you some bread flour. So we're going to add about three cups of flour to our yeast mixture here, one cup at a time, just until it comes together. Okay, so we're gonna start with one cup. It doesn't need to be sifted or anything like that. one cup in here, get that stirred in. And it doesn't have to be completely mixed before you put in your next round of flour. And our last cup for now. And guys, make sure your work surface is nice and clean because next we will be turning this out on a lightly floured surface so that we can get it kneaded. Pretty good, it's pretty much a soft dough. You guys can see what that looks like in there. It doesn't need to be perfectly uh, come together because that's what we're gonna be kneading it for. 
You don't need a lot. You can always add more. Just dump it out. And you just want to push it together at first and start kneading. When you knead, you bring the dough together to you and push away from you with the bottoms of your hand, your palms. And I'm going to keep kneading this for the next five to eight minutes. And we'll be back. Okay, guys, we have been kneading this for just about six minutes. And as you can see, it's getting smooth. And it's a nice ball. And that's just what we want. This, by far, is the hardest part of making this from scratch. But it's fun. And you can use a bread machine. You can use a stand mixer if you have it. But you know, I don't have one. Well, you know, I have a stand mixer, but I don't use it. I just don't like it. But a lot of people don't have a stand mixer. A lot of people don't have a bread machine. So the next best thing, use your own hands, your own muscles, and get her done. <laughs> get her done, guys. You know, we can't be spending all that money for this equipment that we're going to use once or twice a year. So the next best thing is the old-fashioned way. Made from scratch and by hand, guys. Okay, so I think we are just about done. We're going to get this in an oiled bowl. We're going to cover it. It's a good exercise too, guys. Yes. <laughs> a good exercise. Come on now, build those muscles. Yes, you might as well be lifting weights when you're kneading dough. All right. So we're going to get this in this bowl, put a little oil in it. And later on, I'm gonna tell you a little trick about helping this dough rise in our new modern homes. Yes, okay. All right, so that's about it. Nice, smooth ball. Okay, so I'm just gonna put maybe about a teaspoon of oil in the bottom of this um, bowl. You want a deep bowl. And you just want to cover it, run it around the bottom of the bowl like that, and then flip it over. Then you want to cover it. Simple, simple plastic wrap does the trick. And now you get to take a break from all that hard work we did kneading this dough because it needs to rise about an hour to an hour and a half. It's going to Double in size, pretty much. That's what we wanted to double in size. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to actually sit this in my oven. The oven's not on. I'm going to sit this in the oven and we'll be back. Okay, guys, our dough has pretty much risen and the perfect size pan would be a nine by nine inch pan for these. Typically, when I'm making these donuts, I'm making about three to four dozen at least, sometimes more. So I typically using all the pans I have. I don't have a nine by nine inch pan, so my closest pan is nine by 13. So guess what guys, we're gonna go with it, okay? So you wanna lightly spray it. I just have some olive oil, olive oil spray. I'm just gonna lightly spray my pan. That's it for that. Then we're gonna turn this dough out onto a floured surface lightly floured surface guys you don't need a lot you don't need a lot you can always add a little more but you don't want to put too much down in the beginning take this off and some little flour there turn your dough out over here onto your floured surface and we're just going to make it into a log guys and cut our rolls form them into balls and put them in our baking dish
you want to try to get these rolls as even as possible so you won't have a little bitty roll and a big fat roll and an in-between roll and then people be fighting over the big roll because nobody wants a little bitty roll because I'm telling you they taste good. <laughs> I'm just saying. They taste really, really good, guys. Uh, we have had these for dinner and I have seen people literally sit there and eat roll after roll with butter and not touch the food. They are that good. They are awesome and amazing. Since I have a little bit bigger pan, I'm gonna see if I can get maybe a dozen out of there, out of here. Just trying to make sure my log is even. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, a roll is a roll, guys, come on. This isn't a commercial kitchen here where we gotta have them absolutely perfect. This is at my table, and this is mama's dinner. Yes, just the fact that you made them from scratch, your guest and family will be so impressed. They'll be like, you didn't buy, you bought these. You didn't, you didn't buy these. You'll be like, I made these. Yes. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, let's see here. I'm still ending up with nine, which is what this particular recipe calls for, for that size pan. Then you wanna take each one of your cut pieces and form them into a ball and place the part that you're making into the ball, place that side down in your pan. Just make it into a ball, guys. No rhyme or reason, just want them into a ball. And even mine aren't going to be perfectly even because here's a little one right here. Once we get them all formed into the ball, we're gonna put them back in our oven. And speaking of putting them back in our oven, a little tip to help, if your house is drafty or overly hot, overly cold, however you may like your house, one thing you can do is turn your oven before you start, before you even start with the yeast. Turn your oven on to the lowest setting, whatever it be, my oven, is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. That's as low as my oven will go. So I put it on that and as soon as it comes to temp, as soon as you hear it beep, 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 it's, it's at temp or whatever noise your oven may or may not make, turn it off and just leave it be. That's going to provide a nice warm like place for your dough to rise. It works for me, I can't guarantee it. It's my oven, it's just a little trick that I do, but it's worth giving it a shot, guys. Some of these are not into balls, so I'm making them into balls. I didn't actually close the bottoms up enough. And we're just gonna cover them again and put them back in there for about maybe 30, 45 minutes until they rise some and then we will bake them okay guys so i'm going to get these covered in just a second here just making sure i form my balls correctly or better i should say there really is no right and wrong but you do want the bottoms to be completely closed up and mine just simply were not. A 
We're not trying to make cinnamon rolls here, guys. That's my other video. <laughs> We're not making cinnamon rolls. We're trying to make rolls, a dinner rolls, guys. Okay. So I just kind of sat them in here, no rhyme or reason. Take a look before they go in the oven again to rise. Okay, again, plastic wrap. You can do this with a towel. I just like using the plastic wrap better. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get these covered in the oven and we'll be back when it's time to bake. Okay, guys, we are done with our second rise so we can uncover them and bake them. We're going to bake them. As you can see, they have puffed up quite a bit. We're going to bake them in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. And I stressed Fahrenheit because I realized some people have different ovens in different countries and different places. And I've had people say, my oven doesn't go to that. So it's Fahrenheit, 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 to 20 minutes. And we'll be back. Okay, guys, we are out of the oven and they are looking good. Yes. I kind of scooted them all over because I'm just like that. I like for them to be neat. So the first thing you want to do is go in and brush the tops with a little butter. Yes. Oh, sooty sooty now. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Your family, your friends, your neighbors, your enemies, they gonna love you. They gonna say, oh, no, she didn't. Or, oh, no, he didn't. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Just slather the butter on, guys. Slather the butter on. Yes. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, we're gonna go in for our taste test. I gotta let them cool just a second though, cause it's so hot I can't pick them up. We just took them out of the oven. Guys, just bathe them in the butter. Give them some love. Come on now. All right. Ah, bathe them in this butter, guys. Yes. You wanna show all the love you can to these. Mm, mm, mm. And it's okay if they're not perfectly even on the sides because they're going to be gone in a minute. They are going to be gone, guys. Yes. Okay, guys. Let's get ready for our taste test. Mm. Okay, guys. We are all done. Oh, my goodness. We're going to taste this. Ooh, look at that. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Let's break it open. Yeah, so you guys can see. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the steam coming out of that, guys. Mm. Oh, my goodness. And you know I got to swallow a little bit more butter on this biscuit. Come on, guys. You know you want some. You know you want some. Look at that, guys. Oh, my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Mm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Guys, this is delicious. Mmm, I'm gonna have trouble not eating this whole thing by myself. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. You can taste the sweetness. A little bit of the pineapple, hence Hawaiian sweet rolls. Yes. Oh my goodness, guys! Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, ooh, mm. Mm, mm, mm. 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 Lord have mercy. I couldn't make these all the time. Or I'll be going through the door sideways. Because there's no way I fit. It, no way I fit. Because if I make them, I'm going to eat them. These are so good, guys. You have got to try these for your holiday meal. Just make a small batch like this and buy you some too. If you don't think you're going to do it right. But I guarantee you, these going to leave your house before those will. Any day of the week. So guys... If you are not subscribed to me, 
what you waiting on? Go ahead and tap that bell so we can keep cooking together. Make sure you turn that notification on. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and leave me some comments. Come on, guys, tell me, are you going to try this or not? Come on. And if you do, I want to know. And for those of you who are already subscribed to me, thank you so much for your loyal support. You guys are amazing. And guys, if you want to support this channel even more, I have channel memberships. Join. I'm going to be doing live cooking demos for my members only as soon as I get into a certain amount of members. So go ahead, guys. Sign up. Sign up so we can get to cooking together. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Mmm, mmm, mmm. 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 I don't know what else to say. I'm gonna get out of here. I said go eat that other half. I need me a cup of coffee. I don't need anything but the butter, the biscuit. This not biscuits, the butter, the roll, and some coffee or either a little something, something. Mmm. Come on now. Mmm. Guys, I will see you next time. The good Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm.